they'd mail one out. But we are going <laughs> to hop into Champion Select here as Why UP to take that? on EDG. <laughs> they wouldn't. I just wanted to throw it in there. At least we've now got it on air. Yeah. As Azir is going to be the first ban away from Pawn. Finally, Team's going to be taking that one away from him. Callista is going to be the follow-up. Of course, EDG now with sort of Callista, Rise Echo as their fairly stock standard bans here. Of course, we are on 5.13. So Ezreal's still most definitely a thing. Is Gragas going to hit the hay? Is Kulilov not going to be able to pick that one up? Yeah, and Pawn has played the AP Ezreal in the mid lane, so would not be surprised if UP banned that one away. But finally some respect ge being given to the Azir. You know, we used to joke a lot, Death yeah. doesn't play Callista, Pawn doesn't play Azir. They're just two things that you kind of took for granted. But around playoffs and MSI time, they started to jump on these, I guess, really popular carries. And boy, has Pawn made so many teams play, uh, oh, pay yeah. for leaving it up. And as you said, Echo, Amy, very big fan of that champion, able to pick that one up and take it. A, uh, so they're going to ban it away in yeah. EDG as I regain the ability to speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Long is hovering the Rek'Sai here, leaving Clear Love with basically an Evelyn if he wants to stick to one of his... So that's why he's hovering well, actually, the Rek'Sai. that's a very good yeah. point, because you can't really pick it against it. Yeah, because just... Able to keep a lot of tabs on Evelyn when Evelyn likes to be able to get those early ganks off to be able to impact the map. So wouldn't be surprised if this is something that Amy wanted to do. Also gives them a very good initiation tool in that flash on borrow as the game goes on. And not a bad presence in the vision game. Yeah, it's very true. And it doesn't leave Clearlo with too many options considering the fact that it does give away that. But needless to say, Maokai is going to be locked in irrespective of all of those things, and Clear Love looking to take away the Rek'Sai. Yeah, that was actually kind of cute in the end from Law, hovering it for so long, because yep. he was like, I do have the ability to play this, so now you cannot blind pick the <laughs> yeah. uh, Evelyn coming through. He really showed him the fact that he could play it, so, you know, not surprised to see that swapped over at the last minute for the power pick of Maokai, because he's the last real true tank available in the top lane, unless Koro wants to play something like that Nautilus, which we haven't seen as much coming through in the LPL. No, not so much from EDG here, as Braum is going to be the lock away here for Mako. Of course, had a stint where he played it a heck of a lot. Hasn't in the last few games, but we'll see what this opens up for UP. Ezreal probably not on the table so much. Yeah, I like what you just mentioned. The fact that they didn't want to pick Ezreal, so they take the Braum because it kind yep. of wipes the AP threat off the map right now. Nothing Punish can do in that mid lane because if it ever gets to a mid game situation, Mako's just going to throw up that Unbreakable, make sure that the rest of his team's safe. Pawn also plays Yasuo for the kind of icing on the cake. Double wall is such a strong composition. And with the amount of unburrows on the team, the threat is just way too real right now for Punish to be able to lock that in. Yeah, it's going to be very, very difficult. EDG sort of playing them into a hole here just a little bit. But one thing that Amy definitely has up his sleeve is that Nidalee, if he wants to pick it up. Hasn't been playing it as much recently, but of course does have it in his back pocket and punish, considering grabbing Thresh here for Heart. With Gragas gone, Nidalee kind of the next tier of jungles on the current patch. And jungles incredibly quickly and has such potent gank presence. I, I like in Nidalee to what Kha'Zix used to be. Because on isolated targets, if you land that spear, she just does ridiculous amounts of damage. She's oh, yeah. a legitimate assassin for the first half of the game that goes towards a poke champion as the game continues on. And because you go for that Ceres on a, a little bit more of the damage build, it's great to run something like a Maokai because it means that you have a third threat coming out of the jungle in the form of an AP dealer. Yeah, exactly. And on, hovering Trindamir. It's not, not going to be a dream. It's most certainly not. One thing that like I was just having this complete mind melt over was the fact that EDG could wait until last pick and grab Yasuo for the double wind wall effect with the unbreakable and the wind wall. Just stop any poke that UP would ever want to throw down. Of course, the option's still there. Haven't seen Pawn play Yasuo for quite a while, though. No, we certainly haven't, but I'm sure he can play it incredibly he can, I believe well. he can play everything incredibly well. Yeah, that seems, that to, be seems to be the recurrent trend. And they have picked an AP top laner, so yeah. always going to be available as Deft once again goes towards a hyper carry. Yeah, back on the Cogmore as well. So I wanted to pick that one up with the Braum, of course. Extra long range with that Bio Arcane Barrage. Pretty handy there for making sure that you do get down those stuns with the concussive blows. Scatch, though, no surprise, is going to be hovering the Ash. We'll see whether he actually decides to lock it in. And if he did, that lane would have a heck of a lot of CC. Certainly does, and really good gank setup coming through there. 
Uh, this is really cute. This, yeah. This Heart's like, I know what you're thinking, guys. The whole draft phase out of UP has actually been quite good so far because they have this pick composition on the table right now where Sketch able to fire an arrow at someone. Amy will dish out all this damage from the jungle position. You throw in a twist of fate. That's even more pick potential oh coming. Oh, my goodness. Out there as they just change everything up. So I'm going to stop talking about pick. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we've got to just stop discussing the hovers. We do have three seconds to go here as UP lock in Twitch and Lulu. So it's been a while since we've seen a submarine play come through. Yeah. That most certainly has. It looks like a real sort of raise the Twitch comp as well. Gets right into the middle and then Wild Growth comes out and he instantly still dies. I don't know. No, so the reason Wild Growth is so good because Twitch does this thing once he gets Blade of the Ruin King where you just march up mid laners. Wow, he locked in Yasuo. Instantly. Yeah. All right, let's get to that in a second. Back to Twitch. <laughs> um, so he marches up mid lane and then you put help picks on him. Yep. And then as soon as he walks underneath him, you Wild Growth him. So then the mid laner can't turn around and kill him. And yep. then he gets like this instant stealth gank. It's really quite cute. So that's what they're looking to do in the mid lane. But, you know, throw all that aside. Pawn's locked in one of his more famous champions in the mid lane. It's just ridiculous as well. No fear. I mean, they knew that UP were ready for this pick. UP hovered it as sort of a, a little bit of a taunt there towards Pawn. But no time wasted. Mako's like, all right, we got this on lockdown. Locks in the Yasuo. Of course, lots of knockups available. That Glacial Fissure able to get the AoE knockup. We've got the Unburrow here from Clearlove as well. So many options for Pawn. Plus the fact that they can negate any sort of poke that is going to be coming down with both Windwall and Unbreak. And it's not even the poke. It's a Spray and Prey or the rat -a -tat, tat I don't yeah. know what it's called. Because you can set up double walls and all of a sudden Twitch's positioning becomes absolutely crucial to be able to get any damage across in these team yeah. fights right now. It's just this huge frontline and double wall that he's not necessarily going to be able to penetrate. Yeah, that being said, we've also got a great matchup here for Koro in the top lane as Rumble's going to be taking on the Maokai as Amy trying to put his carry pants on, especially in the early game with that nidalee into the rec side. Yeah, and Punish versus Pawn. It will be the Lulu versus the Yasuo in the mid lane. But this is where it gets interesting. Two hyper carries, one very popular right now in Cogmore, but against Twitch, which we haven't seen on Summoner's Rift no, in quite some time. Not a whole lot. And of course, both of these champions really able to excel in that late game stage with massive range, but Twitch having the AoE yeah. advantage. I was going to say different reasons. Twitch, all about the physical damage across every one. On yeah. the other side, you've got the magic damage on a single target to chunk them out. Well, we'll see if we can get to that point as we hop onto the rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, for our fifth match of the evening. Of course, it is our third match. Fifth game as UP take on EDG. UP over on our blue side and EDG wearing the red shorts tonight for our first game of this series. We'll see whether Pawns Yasuo can go off this time because we haven't seen it this split. We'll see whether it's still as potent as, as it has been in the past. And you know, we used to joke that Pawn always gets a sneaky game on a melee assassin. We were well, waiting we for the talent. talent. Yeah. yeah, but he's bought out the Yasuo for his one melee assassin game There's this time around. There's always next game spawn. <laughs> always next game. It's not going to happen. But... He's got his own skins. <laughs> and Skat is using it. Yeah. Deft hanging around on his oven as well. Very exciting. Yep, Skat, of course. Now I'm going to walk over a ward here. EDG managed to get a deep one down. Lots of pings. You can see Hart at it again. UP are actually one of my favorite teams to. Because they literally ping out the path they want to take to things. <laughs> Walk through this brush, then into this brush. Well, they are going to give up on that one. They do manage to get a deep ward down, but not too many. EDG with a lot of defensive vision, but nothing to check any potential lane swaps that are going to be happening. Needless to, needless to say, they are not going to find one, as both EDG and UP happy to have standard lanes down here towards the bottom side. Yeah, and this is a strange decision because there's a lane bully on each side of the bottom lane, deft a little bit more with his long range. Yep. But Hart definitely a much bigger lane bully than the Braum. Braum is not intimidating at all after level one until about level six. So, But Twitch is the same. He's not really going to get much work done in a 2v2. So doesn't really favor either team. We'll come down very heavily to execution focus. Who can push someone in, maybe get it quick level two. Okay. 
Yeah, we'll see what, what this level 2 is going to bring here as Heart's going to take a couple of stacks of that concussive blows, but it is going to wear off. And EDG with the lane pushing towards them, now trying to clear that one out. Scatch moving forward. Yeah, they're going to get it first. They get the early shot. Yeah, so. UP with control of the bottom side. I want you to take us through spawn, though, this mid lane. We do see a little bit more action. But the mid lane, of course, Pawn up against Punished here on the Lulu. And he picked the Lulu, understanding that Yasuo was definitely an option here for EDG. Yeah, he certainly did. And Lulu's just fantastic against... Nice dodge of the hook there from both Mako and Death. Uh, Lulu's just really good against Assassins. Able to use a Polymorph, get the wild growth on yourself and be able to stop any of that high burst damage coming through. So it's not going to really be worried. But in saying that... Punish very much about team fighting this game, and Pawn can probably sit and split push because looking through the UP lineup, there's not many people that can go with a Yasuo once he gets to that static shiv, Blade of the Ruined King. So we will see Pawn at a point in this game where he can just run around the map unchecked and see if he can knock down some structures. And we'll see whether he decides to go for that uh, Trinity Force build that we've been seeing yeah. Yeah, get a little bit more popular. Of course, he decided to build an Alacrity boost very early on as well as Kara is going to try and burn down the tree here on the top side. Balancing himself just a little bit. You can see Pawn farming very, very well. Definitely something that Yasuo is certainly able to do. And Deft happily farming underneath his turret. We haven't touched in so much with the junglers. Clear Love has gone back to base after grabbing his red buff. All right, let's just talk about what Pawn just did. Pawn grabbed his wave, stopped it before it hit the turret, and windwalled so he didn't take any creep damage to create a freeze on his side of the map. This ensures that he has a little bit more safety from any jungle gang's going to come through. Deliberately misses a cue to send a message there, Atlas. <laughs> I'm trying to speak good things of you, sir. And uh, yeah, that's just really good control over the mid lane. Well, he's going aggressive here on the Punish, who does shield himself up. There's the knockoff from Pawn, able to get a lot of extra damage off, but finally, Polymorph will come in and Pawn will have to back away. That's a problem when you play against the Lulu. Just has the ability to stop you dead in the tracks, make you a fluffy kitten or whatever the heck it is. Squirrel. But, of course, this is what Lulu is fantastic at. So one, one thing I was going to mention was the fact that I see Lulu as more of a neutralizing laner. It doesn't necessarily stop anyone from getting anything done, but it avoids any snowball. Oh. At times, she's an outright bully lane. If you're able to get anything early going on her, she's pretty obnoxious with her auto attack harax that comes through from picks. If you're able to generate any of the lead. But you're right, at worst, Lulu's always a neutralizing lane. You can't really shut her down at all. Yeah, so definitely an oh, intelligent members blind up here pick in the top here. Yeah, Hart looking for Koro. Does still have his flash. Death Sentence is going to be moved out of the way of. Has to burn a Sunderstock. Yeah, flashed out already. So Hart... The decent roam. Pawn maxing the E. That means he wants to fight punished. Yep. And it also means that Spawn is very happy with him. Certainly he's been quite vocal. But EDG with a heck of a lot of control here on the bottom side. Scatch still waiting around, but he's only level three. Of course, zoned away from a lot of experience here. Has finally managed to make his way back as Mako takes a little bit more damage. But Clear Love's coming down there looking to dive. Being said, some members of UP are hanging around. Tunnel is available to pull up, but decides not to go in. EG is skirting the outskirts of this one. Oh, man, punished. Disengage coming out in the yeah. bottom lane. EDG just looking to see whether they can create any map pressure with Hearts roam into the top lane. Did suffer a big CS discrepancy because of it in the bottom lane, but if you look at how well Long's doing against Oro, definitely yeah. was worth the bench in all. Well, of course, we'll see whether it pays off. The trade seems to have gone sort of the same way either side, maybe a little bit further in the top side of the map as Pawn is going to continue pushing this one out. It does mean with all of this focus on the bottom and the mid uh, and the top lane, wow. Pawn has been wow. sort of left on his own. Level 6, level 4 here is Amy's going to have to pounce out of the way. Pawn looking to get aggressive onto the enemy jungler. He's trying to create some pressure around the map as he shoves the mid wave in. And actually, a Sheen picked up first here in the bottom lane for Def means he yeah. wants to use that W auto attack with the Sheen proc to create as much single target pressure as possible. Looking for the one auto attack trade. Yeah, Def doing a pretty decent job clearing out these minions as well as UP. Uh, going to wait in this brush spawn, looks at me and shakes his head because he's upset at the fact that I love talking about minion farming too much. 
No, there was very good minion farming. I'll yeah. give it to him. He's setting him up for himself. You know, Mako wasn't there. He was just walking over traps in the jungle. Beautiful work. But Amy hanging around here. They know what's going on towards that bottom side. And UP, there's the ambush. As Mako's going to get flayed back in, taking a fair bit of damage. There's the death sentence eventually as Amy not even going to throw a spear. Doesn't want to get in there. Is Def able to get a lot of damage back down? Yeah, Creep Wave was in the way, I believe, and Def able to turn around so much of that damage as Clear Love falls low to Red Buff. That was an interesting brawl. Of course, he does not have Smite, so not going to be able to get that HP back. Well, it's difficult, you know. Um, a lot of these players used to the PvP game, PvE, will come second. Clear Love struggling against him, but he will be okay. Clear Love is definitely used to the PvE game, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized who I was talking about a little bit too late during that one. Played it for like three years. Yeah, there's Mako as well, using that Unbreakable just to make sure that Def is going to be well and truly safe as they shove in this bottom wave. So this is a downside. They've chunked Sketch out and that turret was already so low. Now double minion wave crashing into it with some pressure of Clear Love coming through. It means that Def is just going to be able to chip away at this turret, maybe even take it out. Oh, oh. he could kill Sketch here as well. Nice use of that Relic Shield from Heart. Deft understanding that the turret is not there. All Winter's Bite was so close. Oh, oh boy. Thank goodness oh, for good that Good chuckle shield. as well out of Scratch <laughs> as he goes back. Sometimes it's just about sending a message. It certainly is. And he's sent one. But he's also been sent back to base. And not a turret whole lot of Dragon money. will go down, which means that, as we said, that top lane venture, it was worth it at the time because of the 16 CS advantage currently on long. But then to give up all pressure on the bottom side of the map, lose a turret this early in the game, lose the dragon, you feel that maybe Amy needed to do some more to create some pressure down there? Because that's not really a great news story right now for UP. Most certainly isn't. One happy to let this wave crash into the turret as well. It was just dashing through, picking up all of this farm. Nice work. Look at that Emax making sure that he can clear out all of those creeps perfectly as Amy's going to pass over the blue buff to punish. Right now, Amy's not even able to get an advantage in farming the jungle because of the early movements. You'd have to think that Clear Love going to Chilling Smite, being the Rek'Sai versus the Nidalee, should have been able to get some form of the advantage, especially with a Trailblazer, but just has not been the case. Hasn't really been able to find it, of course. Seems to be summoned into a whole lot of lanes as opposed to sort of focusing on making sure he gets all of that farm. And unless you can get early kills, because you are looking to be a carry on Italy, it is just so important to be able to farm up the jungle efficiently. That's why a lot of them still go ranges to keep their mana topped off. Yeah. And make sure that they're super healthy flying around the jungle. It just hasn't been the case so far. And wow, Koro's really scared of this lane just doesn't want to give himself the opportunity of getting dived. He's running so far away, he must have... Spidey senses seem to be going completely ballistic. Yeah, for no reason. They're broken. Yeah, that's what I mean. They're on the fritz. But, in saying that, Dragon was taken. There's not really going to be a fight happening around the map because bottom lane turret was gone so early, so not really much to do for as Scat sneaks under death. Yeah, Death's actually in a bit of trouble here, trying to turn it around onto Scatch, actually, as the Ratatat -tat has come through. Clear Love's right in amongst this one, but there are four members of UP on the bottom side. Coral immediately exhausted, can't get a lot of damage down. Scatch, one auto attack, no! One more, yes! Finally, he's gonna go down as Death grabs the kill. Long Force to flash away, one more auto attack will stun him up as Mako's very low. There's another kill on the backside as Amy's gonna get Wild Growth punished. Makes his presence known on the bottom side of the map at EDG. It's a two for nothing their way. Yeah, and double wall, you see that the Nidalee poke just inefficient even on the back end of that fight. And that was without the Rumble Equalizer. Remember, we just said that no team fight was going to happen. UP proves me wrong. Yeah. And that was really one-sided for all of the cooldowns that had already been expended. So in the end, EDG able to get the better of the scuffle and they're already 3,000 gold ahead. Yeah, the ridiculous part of that is as the dust settles, Pawn has two kills on his Cogmore moving away from that team fight. Already had a massive CS lead. And this could only mean disastrous things here for UP as Punish is gonna get zapped by that static shift that's already been completed by Pawn. Yeah, farming at about that 10 CS a minute mark right now. And Deft, you're right, has gone back, picked up Zerka Greaves and the double components of Trinity Force. He is so happy right now. They can rotate him around the map, try and dodge the wave clear and see if they can pick up any turrets before the next dragon spawns at about 14 minutes, 15 minutes, I think. 
Yeah, Amy and Hart up here on the top side. Koro gonna spot them out with that harpoon. Amy just says, um, how did he know that I was there? And tries to sweep the brush, but definitely a blind one from Koro. Certainly wasn't punished. Wow, he's... UDG are unrelenting in how they're sieging up this map right now. Twitch was trying to freeze out the bottom lane. Wasn't able to because it was on his side of the lane. Now trying to take Krugs and he, not even he's going to get that. Yeah, he's going to get knocked up here. Chilling Smite's down as Klulov's going to get Bilgewater Cutlass. Couple more auto attacks as he's trying to burn the rat down. Tanking up the turret forever by the looks of things. <laughs> yeah, he big force to look that wild growth is going to go down on a punish there in the mid lane. In the meanwhile, is Deft just going to wander out casually? So I disagree from that of that choice by EDG. They had punished so low in the mid lane, probably could have just sent Clear Love there to siege up the turret and see if they could knock it down. Instead, use an awful lot to try and take the rat off the map and won't be able to pick up the important objective in the mid lane. Is it about half health on that turret? But we see with a couple of members here able to clear that one now. Picking up a lot of that CS as well. Pawn heading into split push mode. Does have that Ruby Crystal, so it looks like the Trinity Force might be the go for the EDG mid laner. 128 CS now here at 13 minutes into the game, and that is only going to extend as he kills these creeps over and over again. And this is a really annoying thing about Yasuo. He's an efficient jungle farmer as well as minion farmer, so he can just disappear off the map whenever he would like, continue to absorb CS, and even without champion kills, he gets a really early six item build path because static shift, quite efficient. You get to sit on Brawler's Glove as, uh, on Avarice Blade as well for a little while, generally, and going to be able to use all of that to just farm up minions. Nice little answer there from Punish as he nails death. Down to about half health now as Long looking to try and lock down the Void Puppy. But death. Seems like EDG just able to predict exactly when they're going to get aggressed on. I mean, Koro maybe a little bit more than he should. And the rest of the team not really leaving themselves open to counter attack as UP are looking to cut them off here and know that Koro's teleport still is on cooldown. At least chase three members out of the jungle, but Koro in the meanwhile has been able to catch up all that CS. He said it was 19 earlier in the game. Now he's completely back to equal. Yep, UP. Oh, Scatch might be in trouble here. There goes Pawn. Knock up. Almost unnecessary as EDG put the rat to bed. Yeah, overkill? I'd say so. Definitely roadkill now. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yep. I mean, that was messy, but most definitely correct there, Spawners. We do have a slight pause, and I think it might be Scatch wondering why his screen <laughs> went all gray. Uh, that's because you're dead. It certainly is, and you know, he must be getting a little bit frustrated. That's twice that everyone has just burnt so much in the bottom yeah. lane to see if they can get on top of him, but it's a good ta tactic, keeping the AD hyper carry down. We keep mentioning the fact that he's got the Nidalee heal, he's got Lulu behind him to augment all of the damage. If it gets to a late game point, he will be able to dish out what they need to get done in these team fights. But right now, with Yasuo running around the map all the time, chasing him off this CS, I think he's already 40 down because of that roam that our heart went on early game just hasn't turned out to be in their favor yeah and it's the fact that they're trying to leave him there to gather up all of the farm and the solo experience as well but up they almost need to have him with a few extra members of the team so he doesn't just get repetitively die well 100 percent. they were waiting on the power spike that was the blade of the ruin king they wanted him to be able to get that then be able to roam around the map and pick up the kills but in the end, what happened is that they left him alone. He was trying to freeze out waves. And then people just kept chasing him off the farm. EDG not respecting the fact that a deep freeze should mean that yeah. the other team gets there first if you try and aggress on it. And instead of concentrating the mid lane turret or rotating to the top lane and allowing Scatch that time, they've just kept going bottom lane. It means that they have so much pressure over the dragon area because that whole bottom half, the red side of the map, it's just lit up with wards. Yeah, I was going to talk about the wards because that does mean that you, you talk about the fact that UP should be able to collapse faster. It isn't the case because EDG have been walking around that side of the jungle the whole game. Yeah, exactly right. And you saw even when they were trying to chase them out right there, EDG just slowly retreat, nothing to alarm. They Even if it had have come to a fight, would have been able to, I guess, go at least decently in a 4v5 at that stage of the game. And as we jump back onto the rift, Dragon about to respawn. You're right, they just look like they're controlling everything that much better. Yeah, and, and it's not sort of outright aggression here from EDG. It's not the fact that they look like they're able to take any fight. It's the fact that they're calculating exactly which fights they can take and then avoiding any situation that they wouldn't like. Exactly right. Couldn't agree more with you. Once again, timer back. 
I think that was a respawn, in fact, of Scat coming back onto the roof. He's three. No, that's a level eight. I thought it was a six. I was going to have a heart attack. But EDG <laughs> get Dragon number two. Yeah, and Sketch now with Hard here on the bottom side of the map. He's going to be able to pick up some much-needed farm. 40 CS down now as Deft is going to give Clear Love a hand on this buff, and it looks like he's actually going to take it there. So, of course, with the asshole on the map, you're not going to be giving him a blue buff. May as well give it to your Twitch. 100%, especially There's if no you're There's no other Rek'Sai. champion on the yeah. map that would like it. Oh, Manko wouldn't mind it. <laughs> That's a very good point. Need more Winter's Bites. Got to get that 20% cooldown reduction. And wow, once again, Manko's coming into the bottom side of the map. Scatch isn't having fun. No. And um, things aren't looking so good for him moving forward as well. Of course, Bond is going to go back. Probably has a lot of money in his back pocket as well. Grabs the Phage. See what else he decides to pick up. He just spent a whole bunch of change. No. Nope. Just going to be the Phage. Completes that. Grab himself up. a pink ward as well. When you're split pushing, always important to do that. Upgrades his trinket. A lot of extra movement speed as well. Static shield for the extra 10% plus. The Fade with the Rage Passive. Going to be able to move around this rift pretty quickly, despite the fact that he only has the brown bag. Oh, what a bay coming out of Thor. Oh, there's the Equalizer. Long does have to try and use some creative Twisted Advance to get out of this one, but looks like he's not going to be able to, as he's just going to get smacked to death by three EDG. Make that four EDG members. Koro, oh, they were trying to donate it to death. Not going to happen this time, but he grabs an assist. Yeah, pawn kills Nidalee in the mid lane. In the meantime, and EDG have complete control over the map. And once again, Koro was just recalling in sight. You could see that Lung wanted to stop it, didn't want to relent in the pressure that he had put on. And in the end, they make him pay. Yeah, and Clear Love here just in time as well as Pawn just throws out the Steel Tempest the wrong direction. It's a bit rusty, all right? Yeah, there's the Flash the Ignite. Glitter Lance doesn't find Pawn as Punish. Thought he might be able to grab that one, but not going to sacrifice himself for it. And worth the shot. It certainly was, especially I'd when say. the game's going this way. Absorbs a little bit more pressure. UP going to be able to pick up their first turret of the game. It's going to be one to three. Get the gold lead back to about 6,000 still. Wow, that's <laughs> not good. Yeah. Yeah. Looking for positives. Yeah. Difficult to find them here this game, of course, UP on the back foot. But we were mentioning the fact that both of these teams like to fight in the late game, and a lot will be on the back of Scatch as Amy's going to be able to pick up at least the Raptor. But Sketch trying his very best to get himself to a point where he can be relevant this game. It's not going to be for a while. It certainly is not. Has gone with the Blade of the Ruin King first. Expecting your moves to come through next just for a little bit more of an efficient build. Yep. Gives you the armor penetration and a bit of attack speed to your Rado Tat Tat at the same time. And gives you that catch potential as well, which is one thing that UV can still do. He's managed to find anyone isolated and then just destroy them. Speaking of which, Hart is going to get exactly that. Turns the ultimate as well as all of the exhaust, yeah. yeah. And Baron comes out really quickly from the UDG lineup. They can't force it to spawn earlier though. We'll need to wait another minute 20 for that one to come up, but... You're exactly right. I have a feeling that EDG might have their eye on it pretty quickly. Yeah, another patent of 23 minute barrier. Looks to be on the cards for EDG this time around as they're now taking over Amy's jungle. This game has just been so impressive. The amount of teamwork that's coming through and just the always on the same page roaming. Wow. Oh, there's the knock up. Last breath comes through as well as Punish has to wild throw himself up at depth here at exactly the right time. Long's going to get snared up. At the same time, teleports coming in still Death here damage. from Koro. Yeah, you're exactly right. The fact that the Trinity Force has come through, he's doing so much work. EDG have that pick now, and that's a lot of the wave flip. That was just, once again, a great catch coming out of the support player. Mako able to graze Punish with that ultimate. Yeah, just the tip. And Pawn dove at the chance to be able to get in there one more time. Picks up another kill for himself. And EDG, over the last three weeks of the OP uh, LPL, have just looked unstoppable. Going into playoff, you need to get higher on the table. If you're fifth, it's not going to be good enough. You do not want to play these guys until the very last moment. Yeah, you want to make sure that you are not going anywhere near them. But you can see Scatch still stealthing up, trying to find something. Death very low on mana as he just has a giggle as his ovenly self here in the mid lane. Happy to approach the creep wave, but EDG are just so far ahead. 7-0 to zero in the kills. It's approximately 8,000 gold the lead. Three turrets to one, EDG. 
Yeah, I just don't know what you do against this team. Trinity for Static Kill already done for the mid lane of Horn. Nine, uh, 190 CS. My goodness, Nidhi G to say nope, the jungle is now ours. Death grabs himself another blue buff. EDG probably could just walk over to the Baron and they are pinging it out. Yep. They just Sketches know that the they're stronger. Side. They have to come to EDG right now and because of the double wall, they just don't take any damage. Yeah, there's also going to be no chance that uh, UP can get any sort of poke in. Long is going to spot them doing this one. As EDG looking for the knockup, Pawn doesn't quite find it there as the Baron falls down. That was very quick for 20 minutes as the equalizer's there. Long in so much trouble. The knockup's there. Last breath comes down and Pawn locks down yet another kill on the map. Punished walking towards his non-existent turret there in the mid lane and UP just milling about. They don't know what to do. This is so impressive right now. We said that UP... Oh, oh. wow, clear up. Yeah, you, you got no, to unborrow from still. that yeah, one. You, you couldn't no see idea. them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we said the fact that UP, if they can get a late game, they're one of the better team fighting teams. And yeah. They've put together a team fighting composition and EDG recognized that early and just unrelenting with the amount of pressure that they're putting on the map. And that just means it's never going to get to a point where UP can play their brand of League of Legends. EDG, 10,000 gold up in 21 minutes. So incredibly impressive. Haven't dropped a dragon. They've dropped one turret. And that is all that's stopping them from a perfect and they traded game. it for two kills and a turret in the top lane as well, so... Yeah. Oh, well, Blade of the Wrong King almost completed here for Deft as Scatch is going to stealth up and look for something that they... Let's clear out some wards on the side of UP, all of them wanting to make sure they stay together. Off side of the jungle for EDG right now. Yeah. Clearlov spotting everyone out. Hart's going to make his way over along with the Twisted Advance, but Clearlov makes it all the way back. There's the Wind Wall to stop any Spears from coming down. Wild Growth here on Long, who's tanking up a lot of damage. Scatch might Equalizer. find himself in a nice position, but Equalizer, great positioning there from Koro as Long continues to go aggressive. Spear onto death, but no follow-up is available. And UP have to get out, but they don't lose anyone just yet. But Amy and Scatch are in so much trouble. Burnt to death! by Koro, it's going to be Mako and Clearlove picking up those kills. The last one goes to Mako as well as Pawn looking for his own. No oh. tornado to land. But once again, another 3 for 0. Another turret falls. <laughs> a flashing to the base. That must be the surrender vote coming out 23 minutes in. And My EDG God. steamroll UP. That was unbelievable. And this is the team, this is the team that the only team in the LPL that's had 100% win rate against CDG this split. And that is not the same game. You can see Koro pretty happy with how that one went. Of course, still playing a little bit. They didn't get a kill. If they hadn't dropped that yeah. turret in the bottom lane, perfect game. Yeah, precisely. So, Punish, you can see there on your screen, he's like, okay, let's move on to the next game. Let's not think about that at all. Get back on the rip and see whether we can do things I think he's like us. Time. He's like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> and Clear Love just looks like it's another day in the office. Yeah, yep. the expressionless one. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I wish I had seen those people that were trying to back. Of course, he actually has no idea. <laughs> he, didn't, he doesn't know yet. <laughs> I'm sure someone will tell him. <laughs> yeah, check out the vibe. Clear up, what are you doing? It was underground, man. I'm not supposed to see anyone. You can see Pawn. He's ready to get back into it as well, but my goodness. I just don't know what to talk about now because EDG was just honestly a steamroll. And it was a proactive play that came out of heart that set that emotion for EDG. Yeah. He went top lane, burnt Koro's flash, tried to get long ahead, and it worked. But they just couldn't defend the bottom lane turret. Amy didn't get down there soon enough. When he did go there, it was a failed gank. Wasn't able to get the spear because of a missed yeah. time minion wave coming in to interrupt him. And that just meant, from that time on, Deft had all the control over the lane. They knocked down bottom turret. They knocked down Dragon. Translated that into a split pushing pawn. Made sure that he had control of everything. Yeah. And then it was just comprehensive, clinical coming through. Yeah. And there was absolutely... Yeah. They had no way back in. And Scatch just getting repeatedly dived over and over again. All of the backup vision that EDG had provided for the split pushing Yasuo. And, you know, Mako and Clear have just wandered down this sort of duo of junglers. Both of them here... Of course, LPL has multiple junglers per team, if you uh, weren't aware. And they just wandered into the lane, helped him out, gave him some knockups, and it was easy pickings here for Pawn, who just got way too unbelievably fed. 
And it was all she wrote from there. And that's Pawn's style of League of Legends. Yeah. He wants to be isolated. He wants to be strong enough that he can be the distraction, run around the map, cause yeah. havoc. That doesn't mean he's not a legitimate carry. We just saw he was outputting so much damage. But he was 1v1ing the jungle in mid lane while everyone else was top. Gank, uh, ganking long, getting rid of that top lane turret. Yeah. He's just a guy that wants to be there and just cause zones of pressure that you have to respond to. So everyone else, that four-man famous... MSI unit can get so much work done around the map. Yeah, just ab so incredibly impressive. But of course, it is a two-game series. UP, we'll see whether they can completely forget about that last game and move forward and try and give it to EDG because they need a victory in this next game to keep their dreams alive, guys. Don't go anywhere. We're just going to have a short break. We'll be right back with more LPL action.